Greece is on the brink of becoming a failed state. That's right. The ancient home of democracy might this week become a failed state, a case in point of Thatcher's insight that the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money. Yesterday, Greek voters decided to support the country's socialist prime minister, Alexis Tsipras, and rejected an international bailout plan. That plan would have granted billions of euros in new fiscal support to the Greek government in return for structural reforms to Greece's economy. So the Europeans said, we'll give you another extension, another debt relief package in return for cutting back on benefits and pensions, etc. And Greece voted and said no. Mr. Tsipras and his party pretend that Greece can somehow forge a better future by continuing to live in economic delusion. Consider the fact that even with a rapidly aging population, Greeks continue to be allowed to retire early. Mr. Tsipras also has very little interest in opening up Greece's notoriously restrictive industries to greater competition and fewer regulations. There's no question that the creditors' demands for serious economic reforms are desperately needed in Greece. Today, Greece's unemployment rate is 26%. Its youth unemployment rate is nearly double that. And while Greece's public sector is bloated and incredibly inefficient, the taxes needed to pay for that big government are rarely collected. You see, in Greece, tax avoidance has long been an art form that's socially acceptable. And at the same time, generous entitlements are expected. They're an integral part of the state-citizen relationship. It's a dream world in which the sums are never expected to add up. So what happens now that Greece has voted no? Well, Mr. Tsipras says that the no vote means he'll be able to get a better deal for Greece. He claims that because his voters have rejected the austerity reforms demanded by foreign creditors, those creditors will now have to offer support without major structural reforms attached. In other words, give us your money and we'll talk to you six months from now when that money runs out. The simple truth is that without new bailout money, Greek banks will shortly collapse. And if that happens, a major exodus of finance and investment will rapidly overwhelm Greek society. And this isn't just a pie in the sky theory. Having alienated major European leaders like Angela Merkel of Germany, Prime Minister Tsipras no longer has much credibility as a reliable negotiating partner. And as such, Germany and its creditor partners are close to giving up on Tsipras. Instead, they are strongly indicating that they'll force a Greek withdrawal from the European Union. And again, if that happens, all of Greece will suffer overnight. The real value of millions of Greek savings accounts will plummet as Greek abandons the euro. And in a country already fraught by deep social currents of dissatisfaction, the risk of political extremism would grow very quickly. This sad saga doesn't just speak to an illness in Greek society. It also tells a great deal about the dysfunction that now defines the European Union as a whole. The EU has become an impossible puzzle of political chaos run by a centralized elite of bureaucrats and governed on the whims of left-wing activists. It attempts to maintain a unified political structure out of 28 different member nations, each with their own unique cultures, societies, and economies. But the various parts don't fit. Consider this, within the EU, there are strong, developed Western European economies like Germany, but they're tied to the crisis economies of Greece and Portugal, which cripple them. How do you set an interest rate for all these different places? Does it make sense that weaker economies are tied to stronger ones in an economic union? There are great systemic weaknesses within the EU that aren't going away. Not only should Greece be kicked out of the EU, it's like kicking a mooching roommate out of the house, it's only sensible, but perhaps the EU should be dismantled too. And if not, at a minimum, EU states should cease their support for closer political integration and instead focus on strengthening the EU's free trade environment and the mutual prosperity that strength can offer. For the Rebel.media, I'm Marissa Semkew.